Hey everybody, welcome back to Fish the Moment. And uh, today what I want to talk about a little bit is uh, summertime lures for shallow water fishing and particularly um, my top five uh, summertime shallow water lures and that I've sort of developed and sort of uh, gained the fondness for from fishing over the past 40 years all over the country, uh, different types of waters during the summer. And I found, uh, you know, five baits that really work well for me. And I want to go over each one of these baits in some detail and sort of let you know uh, why I like them and uh, what the situation is where I like to throw them. So first of all, um, in the summertime of the year, I love to flip. You know, there's it's just a really good technique for that time of year. Um, depending upon what type of the what part of the country you're fishing in, uh, it could be grass, it could be wood, it could be rock, it could be uh, flooded cover. Uh, you know, every area around the country is unique in the type of uh, flipping opportunities and potential that they have. Um, but there's two different setups that I like to flip in the summertime. Um, first of all I want to start out with is the old school big jig. Now this is probably one of my favorite all-time lures right here. It's a half ounce full-size jig, 5 watt flipping hook, um, and this particular one I've got a zoom super chunk on it and I sort of want to go over a little bit about the jig and the trailers. But the thing about a big jig, uh, particularly like a black and blue jig, is if you can get them to bite this bait in the summertime, this is probably the number one lure to catch big fish on in the summertime of the year during when it's really hot, if, uh, the big black jig. It's something you don't, may not get as many bites on, but the quality potential is really there. Now, back here in Missouri, like 30 years ago, in the summertime of the year, this is the only thing that was on my rod. I fished, uh, every tournament I fished in the summertime of the year in Missouri, Oklahoma, Arkansas, I'd have a big full-size black and blue jig with a big, at that time, it was a pork frog on it, 30-pound test line, flip and stick. That was the deal. But like any other lure, basket condition to it a little bit, um, and, you know, they tend to you know get on some other baits eventually but um, this is my favorite setup right here um, what you're looking for on this is uh, you know there are a lot of different good jigs out on the market I'm not really going to talk specifically about a brand of jig um, but what I'm looking for is like a half ounce to a three quarter ounce size in the summertime of the year when the water's hot it doesn't matter if I'm fishing in a foot of water or five foot of water I want a bait that falls a little bit faster and I really like the way that a half ounce jig on 25 pound test line falls. It's just, it's got the, in me, it's got the right rate of descent um, and it really triggers a lot of strikes. Color wise on the jig, there's basically three different colors I like to use in the summertime. Black and blue is my favorite, followed by uh, black and chartreuse, um, which I like to use because a lot of people don't like to use it. And I use that particularly if the water's really dirty. And then I'll use some type of a green pumpkin if the water visibility is like over two foot in visibility. Uh, and I'll match it with the trailers accordingly. Now the trailers I use, like I said, this is a zoom super chunk on there. It's, a, it's threaded on, as you can see on the hook shank. Um, and it makes a fairly large profile, but also I like to use, Zoom makes one called a Big Salty Chunk, which is a, like a pork frog type trailer. I like to use that. And at times I like to use some type of a flap and tail trailer, something that's got legs on it. Sometimes they'll react to that a little bit better. But in my own personal experience, I found out that the, uh, the, the, the frog type, you know, straight uh, tail trailer without the legs, that's sort of my confidence bait. And I know a lot of people have gotten to the, the you know, twisty leg type trailers, and that's fine. They catch a lot of fish too. But ultimately, what you have to realize on this, it's a matter of experimentation. You have to get the profile of the jig set up to the personality of the fish. Sometimes they want a little bit bulkier bait. Sometimes they want a, a full skirt with like three strands in it that's big and bulky like this. Sometimes they want to cut down and they want the trailer a little bit more subtle. So a lot of this is experimentation, you know, just seeing what the bass react to more than anything else. And also, like I said, a little bit about colors on here again. Um, you know, colors to me, you know, water visibility completely dictates the color. And a good, like I said, a good rule of thumb is that um, if you're fishing, you know, like a water visibilities of over three feet, like I said, stay with those natural tones, the watermelons, the green pumpkins. Sometimes I like a little bit of orange in the green pumpkin. 
of kind of uh, orange or chartreuse to maybe resemble a perch. Um, and then a lot of times, uh, you know, I'll turn over some rocks and try to see what the crawfish colors are like in the summer times of the year. Um, and depending upon that, I may mix it up a little bit like with a peanut butter and jelly skirt with a green pumpkin trailer. Um, and, you know, just try to match the hatch as much as I can if that water visibility is over two feet. Now, if the water is under two feet, that's when I'm th th talked about like the black and chartreuse and the black and blue. I want something that silhouettes a little bit more. I'm not really concerned about matching the hatch as much as getting that silhouette. So anyway, big jig, really good lure for this time of year for flipping. Doesn't matter what you're flipping, grass, wood, uh, rocks, whatever like that, it's really good. Now, the second flipping uh, setup I have is a little bit more downsized subdued one. It's the, uh, the, uh, the Zoom Speed Craw. Now this uh, little crawfish imitator, it's like three inches long. It's got the flapping legs on it like this. Um, this is a really good bait when the fish are a little bit more finicky and particularly if the cover that you're flipping is not quite as thick. So if I'm, fish if I'm flipping around isolated stumps, if I'm fishing around dog pilings, uh, something that is not like really gnarly, I like this particular setup right here, particularly if that water visibility is greater than two foot again. Um, a lot of times they don't want the big jig or they get conditioned to it real quick and you can get a lot more bites by downsizing uh, to the smaller baits like the speed crawl. A lot of different profiles out there. You know, the Cinco type baits are good. Any type of crawfish, smaller creature baits like the, the baby brush hogs, that type of stuff, um, really good this time of year. Um, again, I'm fishing at this particular one. I got it on a 3 8 ounce slip sinker, uh, three yacht straight shank hooked. And I really like the way that this particular bait falls on a 3 8 uh, setup. You know, pitch is really easy. Um, you got a good rate of fall on there. I can, uh, you know, really pick apart cover really good with it. Uh, here again, matching it up with 20, 25 pound test line. Uh, both of these setups, I've got the 7.6 Mega Bass Alkley uh, Flipping Stick, uh, 25 pound test Seaguar and Vizex line. Um, and that's just a really good setup for the way I like to fish with that. Colors on these baits are really big factor two. Most of the time in the summertime of the year, I like to use some type of green pumpkin or watermelon with a little bit of chartreuse on the tail because I think, I really think in the summertime of the year that bass are feeding heavily on bluegill and perch. That's just sort of what they do that time of the year. So even if that water visibility is like, you know, maybe 12 inches or a little bit more, I still try to stay with the green pumpkins. I get a lot of bites on it. Seems like I get, I get twice the bites on a green pumpkin or a watermelon as I do a darker color. Now, I will use like the black and blue, uh, black red flake, that type of stuff, uh, you know, if that water visibility is under 12 inches, or right off the bat in the morning, even if the water is a little bit cleaner, right off the bat in the morning, I may use a little bit, bit darker color. Um, but what I'm wanting to do is I want to stick with that more natural uh, presentation. But those are my two uh, flipping setups. Smaller soft plastics and the big jig. Okay, the third bait we're talking about here is one of my favorite is the uh, frog. This is a mega bass, big gabbit. Um, a topwater frog is one of the best lures to catch bass in the heat of the summer in really shallow water all over the country. It doesn't matter where you're fishing. Um, this particular bait, um, you can put it anywhere. You can put it back underneath overhanging trees. You can put it underneath docks. You can put it back in, in the thickest vegetation you want to do. And there's always a population of good fish that are living in that super, super shallow water in the summertime of the year, all over the country. It doesn't matter, uh, even if that water is clear, even, even if you've got like, uh, you know, five foot of visibility, if you can find shade in real shallow water during the summertime of the year, um, those fish are gonna be there. Because here again, like I said, they're feeding heavily on bluegill that time of year. Um, even though this is a black and black frog, which is, is my favorite color to, to use, I'll, sometimes I'll use the perch colored frogs, but that's what they're up there looking for. They're up there looking for those bluegills cruising, spawning. That's why it's so effective. But areas that you want to look for on the frog, um, I tend to, to like to, and, and you know, we'll talk a little bit here in a second when I get into crankbaits, but in the summertime of the year, I tend to like to fish in the back ends of the creeks and up the river to, to, to really maximize your best shallow options. But the frog is an exception to that because the frog is one bait 
that you can catch fish shallow on all over the lake, even in the cleanest part of the lake. You can take any lake that you have, say you've got four foot of visibility down by the dam on the lake that you fish in, you can still catch bass on a frog if you get in the backs of those areas that have lots of heavy shade, real dark areas, uh, any, any place those bass will hide in that, you know, to get out of that sun. Um, big key on the frog is, the, the biggest advice I can give you on frog fishing by far is you got to really work on your casting ability because casting accuracy and being able to put this frog exactly where you want it is the key to getting strikes on this particular bait. You can't just chunk this thing out down the bank and expect to catch many bass on it. You got to learn how to skip a bait. Um, skipping a bait caster with a frog is one of the more difficult techniques in bass fishing, um, but you can if, if you just simply cannot get that down. You can also take a heavy action spinning rod with like 30 pound test braid, and, and you can skip this bait really easily with a spinning rod with a, on a heavy spinning rod. But a tip I'll give you. To help out, to help you learn uh, how to skip a bait caster a little bit better, is the first thing is only spool your reel about half full on line. So, in, in other words, leave about at least a quarter of an, of an inch gap when you put line on your reel. This will cut down your backlashing tremendously. Um, so that's a really good technique. And a lot of things, a lot another things that some guys do is they'll actually, you know, maybe take out. 40, 50 foot of line and they'll put some like electrical tape on their line on the reel so the line can't actually fluff or it can't backlash past 40 feet. So those are two really good tips that you can uh, use to avoid those bird's nests. But a lot of it is just practicing, you know, getting it where you can put that bait, skip it where you want it. Not, you don't necessarily have to skip a frog all the time. You can pitch it, you know, just like you would a jig or a worm, or you can make, you know, short under can cast. But learning how to get that thing where you want it is really key. Another big thing to draw on strikes on the frog is to is to being able to get the rhythm of that frog down to get that good walk in action. You want to be able to get this frog to walk side to side slowly as best as you can. And the best way to do this is you got to keep that rod tip really close to the water. And the higher that you have that rod tip off the water, the more that bait is going to come more just straight through the water. So keep that rod tip right at the water level and downward jerks on it and just go nice and slow back and forth and let it pause a little bit. You don't want to like keep it going all the time. Um, twitch it four or five times, let it sit there, let the ripples dissipate, twitch it again, try to keep it in that key strike zone as long as you can. Um, one of the most fun, exciting ways to fish there is the topwater frog in the summertime. But really quick guys, if you enjoy this video and want to support more content from Fish the Moment, one easy and free way to do that is by going to my website, fishthemoment.com, then going to the support Fish the Moment tab at the top of the screen. This will take you to a page with a couple different ways to support my channel, and one of those is my Tackle Warehouse affiliate link. All you have to do is click on this link, it'll take you straight to Tackle Warehouse, and then if you check out on Tackle Warehouse using that link, I'll get a small percentage of the profits from any purchases you make. And the way this works basically is that there's a little tag at the end of the Tackle Warehouse URL, question mark from equals fish the moment. And anytime you use that link, they'll know that I sent you to the website. And so one way to make sure you always use this link when you shop at Tackle Warehouse is just to bookmark the page and add that to your bookmarks bar. That way, anytime you go to Tackle Warehouse from that bookmark link, you'll be taken straight to Tackle Warehouse using my link, and I'll always get credit for all your purchases. So if you do like the content on my YouTube channel and want to support me further, this is a really easy and free way to do it, and I really appreciate you guys taking a few minutes to do that. Okay, the last two that I want to talk about are, are crankbaits, shallow water crankbaits. Two different type of crankbaits that I use in the summertime of the year. Um, one is the, is the square bill. This is the Mega Bass S crank. Um, probably the top crankbait that you can use for summertime fishing. Um, square bills are so effective. Um, and like I said, we've done some other Fish the Moment videos on them. You can check them out. But one of the big reasons square bills are so effective is the fact that um, you can fish them in really heavy cover. You know, a lot of the baits like a jig or a spinner bait that are traditionally known to come through heavy cover well, you can do the same with a square bill. It's like a four-wheel drive crankbait. 
and that's what you want to do is you want to throw this bait in the thickest cover that you can find and make sure it's always bouncing off something. If you're fishing lay downs, if you're fishing logs, whatever, whatever you're fishing, you want to make sure you get this bait as close to that object as you can. Don't reel it by the object, reel it into the object where you're, you're getting hung up sometimes or a lot of times you know when you get hung up or you hit that and it, and it deflects off at one angle, you know that's when that bass is going to attack it. This bait is really, really good um, anytime you got water visibilities of under 15 inches. When you got really, really hot water and you got shallow water, so you need stained water, you need shallow cover, um, and thirdly on this particular thing is you've got to fish it fast. When you're fishing square bills in the summertime and the water temperature is over to 80 degrees, you're not going to catch many fish just on a medium straight retrieve. You've got to burn this bait on a high speed reel, stop and go retrieve, multiple casts, different angles around the cover that you're fishing. And it's a really exciting way to fish because what you're trying to do on a square bill is you're trying to generate a reaction strike. It's not, you're not really trying to catch those actively feeding fish. Um, you want to fish this bait like mentally that fish doesn't have any time to think about it. It's like he's, he, they either have to grab it or they have to let it go. And a lot of times, you know, fish, you know, just basically capitalizing on their, uh, you know, just their reflex thing that they, you know, they evolved over millions of years. They can't help but not hit the square bill. And that's why it's one of the most effective summertime crankbaits that you can have. Now, the last bait that I'm gonna talk about it's just a small, medium diving crankbait. This is the, the Mega Bass Z crank. Um, a lot of different crankbaits out there on the market like the, you got the 200 Bandits, um, got a lot of smaller crankbaits. It's a, it's a fairly popular size. It, they run these smaller, medium divers like this. They'll run four to six feet deep. They got a medium wobble on it. And these are like a summertime workhorse for me when I'm fishing a rock. What, to me, one of the best uh, techniques to use during the summertime is if I can find riprap banks and stained water or uh, rocky banks that are similar to riprap rip banks and stained water where you have that water visibility again that's under two foot. Um, a lot of those shad, particularly the threadfin shad, like to live in these particular type of areas. I'll get parallel on those banks, tied on the riprap banks, tied on the rocky banks, and make long casts you know, with this medium diving crankbait. Again, with a fairly fast, medium fast stop and go retrieve, uh, normally like 12 to 14 pound test line, um, and just cover water with this particular bait. Um, really good way to catch them with those fish if you have a body of water that just has lots of, uh, just lots of rocks on it. And you can also fish these medium divers around wood also. You know, they'll crawl up over wood. You sort of have to finesse them around a little bit. But, um, you know, they're effective around any cover, but particularly rock. Now, you know, a really good question is, how do you decide which one of these lures to fish under what situations? How do you know when to flip? How do you know when to pick up that crankbait? And how do you know when to pick up that frog? Um, probably the best advice I can give you on this is the crankbait and the flipping, they work hand in hand. So for example, um, if I'm fishing down a row of lay down trees, so say I'm up the river and I'm fishing down a row of lay down trees, um, and they're maybe sparse to get, maybe spaced apart, maybe five to 10 feet you know, away from each other. Um, the, one of the first things I like to do is like to roll through that area with a crankbait because the crankbait normally, it's gonna generate, it's gonna generate a strike from that a little bit more active fish. If there's an aggressive fish in that area, they're gonna hit a crankbait over anything else. They're gonna chase it if they're in a chasing mood. So my first choice when I'm fishing shallow water stain cover is the shallow crankbait, like the square bill or just the medium crankbait. Now, if I don't get any bites, or and the area looks really good, or say if I do get bites, um, that's when I go back through that area. Uh, say, for example, I fish the crankbait for maybe 10 minutes and don't get a bite, that's when I'll pick up a flipping rig, like the jig or the speed craw, and you know, slow down a little bit. Maybe those fish, the personality or the mood uh, that they're in at that time, they don't want to chase quite so much. So. When I'm fishing shallow water, I've always got the flipping outfit and the shallow crankbait side by side, and I'm just rotating back between the two. You know, if I get into a really good looking lay down, say, say, there's, say there's a blow down tree that looks really awesome. 
you know, 100% of the time, there's probably a bass living in that tree. You just have to figure out how to generate that strike. So the first thing I'll do, if, I, if I'm on a prime piece of cover, is I'll throw that crankbait down the corners, down the edge, down any lanes or openings. Um, if I get, if I catch a fish, fine. If I don't catch a fine, the next fish, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up that flipping outfit and I'm going to pitch the thicker back inside, try to penetrate that cover a little bit more. So just remember when you're fishing shallow cranks or flipping, keep the rods side by side, use them on the same color cover because you don't really know uh, what they want until you give it a try. Now the frog fishing is a little bit different because when I'm looking for frog water, it's not the same type of water that I'm choosing to flip or throw a crankbait in. I can flip or throw a crankbait in a, in a wide range of types of cover, but for me, the frog fishing, it's limited to shallow, flat, back end shady areas. So if I'm, say if, say if I'm in the back end of the cove and there's not much cover, say it's rocky banks, gravelly banks, maybe you got a little bit of uh, overhanging trees in there, there's not much to really throw the crankbait or to pitch around. But I look back in the back of that cove and there's like one tree that's overhanging and there's like an area of shade this far off the bank. And that's the only thing unique in that particular area. That's where my castle is gonna go with that frog is to that really isolated shallow piece of shade in the back end of that cove or, or a real tight spot. So just remember um, when you're looking for that type of stuff keep the jig and the keep the flipping outfit and the crankbait side by side and when you're looking for the frog water go for the shady flat areas and it's going to add up to a lot more success for you. So anyway that's my favorites right there. Crankbaits, frogs and flipping. Um, anywhere across the country like I said they're going to work. Everybody has uh, you know baits that they like specifically in the body of water that they fish but I'm confident if you get confident if you gain confidence in shallow cranking frog fishing and uh, flipping that you can catch fish shallow all summer long um, you don't necessarily have to go out and fish deep where you're fishing there's a population that lives shallow all year long and that's my fa five favorite lures for uh, summertime shallow fishing so thanks for tuning in and we'll see you all next time